uh, sorry for interruption. Uh, we uh, continue from where we left. So, management strategy in volume changes. So, what will you do when there is a volume deficit? Estimate of the de deficit and account of the maintenance requirement, the replacement of continuing excessive losses, modification reflecting the effects of associated stress, surgery, age, size, cardiac and renal functions. So, if there is a volume excess, restriction of further water, water and salt intake, diuretic therapy for more severe overload with myocardial inotropic support as necessary. In cases with severe renal impairment, removal of excessive volume by hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. So, what are the indications of fluid therapy? For, rapid, for a rapid restoration of fluid and electrolytes in dehydration due to vomiting, diarrhea, shock, due to hemorrhage or burns or sepsis, then there is total parental nutrition people who cannot take orally uh, the energy sources. So, we have to resort to total parental nutrition that uh, we normally do shortly after doing some major surgeries. Then, anaphylaxis, cardiac arrest, and hypoxia post gastrointestinal surgeries for maintenance replacement of loss. So, what are the advantages of fluid therapy? It provides the patient with life sustaining fluid, electrolytes, and drugs. Immediately and predictable therapeutic, therapeutic effects, preferred for administrating fluids in emergency situation, allow fluid intake when a patient has GI malabsorption, permit accurate dosage titration for analgesia and other drugs because we mix all the drugs in fluid to give to the patient in the IV fits. And what can be the disadvantage? It needs hospitalization costly, obviously, it may uh, lead to some infection or pyogenic reaction or pyogen present in the drips, it causes discomfort, poor patient compliance, fluid overload is a chance always there. So, what is a pre-operative fluid therapy? It is the correction of the volume change, volume deficit result from external loss of fluid or from internal redistribution of extracellular fluid into a non-functional compartment then non-functional because it is no longer able to participate in the normal function of extracellular fluid and may just as well loss externally. Then there is a correction of concentration changes if severe symptomatic hypo or hypernatremia complicates the volume, complicates the volume loss. Then there must be a prompt correction of the correct concentration abnormality to the extent that symptoms are relieved, are relieved is necessary. So what will be the post-operative fluid therapy. It replaces the loss and supply and maintenance. Open wound losses are about 8 cc per kg per hour, whereas nasogastric and urine output also uh, result in loss of fluid. Then there is blood loss and it is replaced by isotonic saline or normal saline or ringer lactate. Unwise, it will be unwise to administer potassium during the first 24 hour until adequate urine output has been established. Even a small quantity of potassium may be detrimental because of fluid shift because uh, it has been recognized that initially after surgery for the first 24 hours kidney tried to preserve sodium and potassium. So there, will, uh, there is a, a great excess of potassium inside the body and if we try to get potassium it, it may be detrimental, uh, det detrimental to the heart uh, functions and it can lead to uh, cardiac fibrillations and clutters, things like that. So, first 24 hours we don't uh, buy giving potassium to the patient. Although we can give uh, no, uh, hypotonics, uh, dex, uh, glucose solution or dextrosiline is the best, I think. And post-operative, what are the post-operative things? Dextrosiline will produce hyponatremia in a post-operative patient. For the first 24 hours, it doesn't matter because kidneys are conserving potassium and sodium. Then, thereafter, 24 hours even required normal saline as a routine dose. You can alternate the bag of saline with dextrosaline with supplementary potassium given best balance on the second and third post optimal. Fluid usually distribute into a colloid. Colloids are the uh, hypertonic solution, they uh, include blood, albumin or gelatin solution. Uh, they stay in the vascular compartment, they don't cross the vascular compartment and don't go into the interstitial fluid department. 
saline stays in the extracellular compartment, doesn't go straight into the cells, whereas dextrose eventually goes to all the compartment, intracellular, extracellular, intravascular. And that can lead into uh, volume overload at times. These are the comp composition of crystalloid, colloid solution, millimole per liter. You can see so what is contained in 0.9% normal saline, 154 millimole of potassium. There is no uh, sodium, there is no potassium. There is chloride in equal amount and its osmolarity is about 380. It is isotonic, whereas 5% dextrose, it doesn't contain any of these uh, ions. It only contains uh, 50 grams of glucose and it about it's hypotonic solution. Whereas Hartmann solution is also hypotonic to an extent it is 280. But it contains 131 millimole of uh, sodium, some potassium, much of colloid and very little calcium. Then they come the colloid solutions that contain sodium very less potassium, chlorides, things like that. This is the distribution of extracellular and intracellular fluid. Where so in extracellular fluid, the potassium is, uh, sodium is about 142 millimole, whereas in intracellular, it is only 10 millimole. This is how chloride and potassium are distributed intracellularly and extracellularly. So what should we, uh, we give to a surgical patient? Either we give crystalloid or colloid. What will be the best? There are some advantages and some disadvantages. And we have to weigh these advantages accordingly. The most uh, favorable solution given to the patient post-operatively are crystalloid or in uh, case of shock. They have the advantage, they are cheap in price, they are non-allergic, no transmission of infection and no interference with coagulation. Where the disadvantage is higher volume and it's needed to replenish the fluid loss and the blood pressure, rel relatively short amount of time remaining intravascularly. Most of it is uh, goes into the extracellular compartment. Whereas colloid has some advantages such as expansion of plasma volume, Far superior, it restores the blood pressure of the patient very uh, smoothly and quickly. Maybe so salt sparing, but they are expensive in price. There is a risk of allergy, coagulopathy, itching, makes us exacerbate tissue edema. This is the fluid management. Majority of the fluid management depends upon the maintenance. The rest goes on to the losses 20% and the deficit we have to so maintenance plus deficit plus ongoing ongoing losses this is the uh, formula holiday sager 4 to 1 rule of giving iv fluids according to the weight of the patient this uh, this are normally uh, used in uh, children where the fluid uh, intake or the requirement is calculated according to the age of the patient you can note these uh, formulas and you can use in Pediatric ward to give fluids to the uh, ch children about up to 15 years of age. So, if the patient is impure, there are uh, and other deficit. And impure deficit is equal to number of hours that patient is going to uh, uh, remain in and for example 12 hours, then maintenance fluid requirement. Then bowel provision may result in up to one liter fluid loss. Now, what is third space losses? If you give isotonic solution, a transfer of uh, extracellular fluid from functional body fluid compartment to a non-functional compartment. This non-functional compartment is a third space loss. Depending on the location and duration of the surgical procedure, amount of tissue trauma and ambient temperature and room temperature. This non-functional compartment increases during illnesses, sepsis, sepsis uh, multiple organ failure, the permeability of the uh, tissues increases and the fluid is lost in this non-functional compartment and it doesn't come into the main circulation and we experience hypotension, things like that. Now, replacing the third space losses, superficial surgery trauma doesn't require much of the fluid, it's only 1 to 2 ml per kg per hour, minimal surgical trauma required 3 to 4 and then neck, moderate surgical trauma, hysterectomy, chest surgery, 5 to 6 and severe surgical trauma 
abdominal perineal repair, nephrectomy, uh, ripple operation of about 8 to 10 ml per kg per hour of fluid is required for maintenance. Then there are me measurable fluid losses. Normally, we put a Foley's catheter to monitor the urine output of the patient post operatively. We uh, pass an NG tube and suction for uh, abdominal surgery. Then the oste osteotomy, doing a uh, functional ileostomy or colostomy, there's a loss of fluid in that. T tube, bleeding, things like that. Unmeasured fluid are fever. For every degree rise in fever, we have to increase about 100 to 150 ml per degree centigrade. So when the patient is having fever, we have to count how much above the normal temperature he is and then we have to add this uh, amount of fluid into the fluid maintenance. Then the patient on ventilator requires extra fluid because there is evaporation of fluid. Then patient who are internally bleeding will require more fluid depending upon what their drains are draining. If there is a blood loss, replace 3 cc of crystalloid solution per cc of blood loss. Crystalloid solution leave the intravascular space. So, if we have to replace, if there is a 1 liter of uh, blood loss, then we have to replace it with 3 liter of crystalloid solution because most of it will go into, escape the intravascular compartment and goes to the extravascular compartment. So, 3 is to 1 is the ratio. When using blood products of colloid, replace blood loss volume per volume. And if we are going giving patient uh, colloid solution, uh, for example, uh, we are giving blood, amine, uh, FFP and things like We have to replace it volume to volume. Then there is a chart showing how we calculate the IV flow rates. The formula for working for out, uh, out flow rate is, this is, you can note this formula. For example, if we have to give 150 ml of IV saline in order of 12 hours using a drop factor of 15 drops, 1 ml contains 15 drops standard. How many drops per minute need to be delivered? And this is how we calculate this formula. It is 31 drops per minute. In 12 hours, we will be transfusing patient about 150 ml of IV saline. So, from this we conclude the, our lecture. If there are any questions, you can email me your question. And uh, this is a short brief discussion about how the fluid are maintain how their balance is maintained in surgical patient. Thank you very much, dears.